بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وطبعا يعني it's a great honor to introduce professor كريم أبو المجد والحقيقة دي state of art فالحقيقة لازم يعني يقدم فيها دكتور كريم بالطريقة اللاقية حاضر his achievements have been spreading worldwide لكن الحقيقة مهما كان لازم أقول إنه أقرب حاجة إلى قلب الدكتور كريم هو العينين وصفوه به إنه he is an Egyptian magician والحقيقة هذا الوصف هو يعني قريب إلى قلبه وقريب إلى قلب العينين وهو قريب إلى قلوبنا جميعا فزي ما طلب مش هطول لأن فعلا أنا محضر ثلاث صفحات إن أنا أقدمه بيها لكن هو يستحق ذلك ولكن ابدأ دكتور كريم عشان نستفيد علميا أكثر شكرا دكتور كريم تفضل وانا اسف جدا ان اي ديسترب يو يعني انا اسف ان انا لخبطت الدنيا بس معلش سامحوني علشان مئة الف حاجه و... و يعني في ناس مستنيني في المؤتمر الثاني اي سي عمالقه في الجهاز الهضمي هنا الوقت في في مصر احسن من من الناس بتوع امريكا يعني فانا فخور بيكم جدا جدا وسامحوني لو انا مرهق شويه انما I will try to move quickly علشان ما اعملكوش مور ديستربنس. ااا ف انا اتكلم على ايه مش عارف انتوا عايزين نتكلم على ايه؟ يعني ايه ايه اللي ايه اللي في خيالكم ان انا أط... يعني اسهم يعني اطول فيه شويه في ليا كام 20 دقيقه 15 لا 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 هنخليها بسرعه كده يعني الجهاز الهضمي ده بيتهيألي أهم للجسم من المخ يعني I believe in that وده السبب اللي إن أنا غيرت من إن يبقى بقى الكبد بس يبقى كل حاجة و أي حاجة أقول لك يعني trust your gut يعني don't trust your brain trust your gut وعشان كده أما أما في واحدة عايزة تتجوز واحد تعمل له طبخة حلوة عشان خدت بالك وبعدين زي ما شفت كده فعلا دي حقيقه لو احنا بس احنا الجهاز الهضمي لم يحظى اي اهتمام من الطب اللي لقرون عديده ما اعرفش ليه انما والله الجهاز الهضمي ده اهم حاجه في الجسم يعني حديثا طلعت بقى بالميكروبيوتا واقول الكلام ده والوقت فيه سيور كتير قوي كل السايكياتريك ديس اوردر سببها الجهاز الهضمي علشان there is a connection always between the gut and the brain اهي يعني انا ما انا ما كذبتش عليكم اهي السلايد اهي خدت بالكم فالمخ بغسل الجهاز الهضمي والجهاز الهضمي بغسل المخ الحاجه is very disturbing me a lot of young patients particularly Female patients, they have a lot of gut dysmotility, a lot, and I don't understand if this is a change in the microbiota. ولاد ال ولاد McDonald's Burger King والكلام ده ولا مش عارف إيه. لدرجة حتى بنت من السعودية دكتور أحمد عادل معنا هو تعذبت في السعودية ف. جبناها هنا فمش عارفين التشخيص بتاعها ايه كان عندها سيجمود بولبلس ففتحناها فعلى طول عرفنا ان هي عندها سود اوبستراكشن المعاء بتاعتها عامله زي البالونه بتاع الهالوجين دي بتاع اللي بتشوفها في ملاعب الاطفال فحاولت افضيها بدها يسرمي الامعاء فرقعت جزء بقى بسيط بفضل الله يعني بس ايه الدكتور احمد عادل وقع على الارض وجبنا له الاسعاف وبتاع حاجه انا ما عمرها ما شفتها فغالبا الميثين ده اللي هو زي بالظبط الانابيب الغاز البوتاجاز حاجه ولحسن الحظ كان في في فيديو فالدكتور احمد عادل فيديو هيحطه على الانترنت هي هتلاقي الناس كلها تتفرج عليه طبعا الجهاز الهضمي اجين يعني الجهاز الهضمي الجسم من غير الجهاز الهضمي ما يسويش حاجه 
وديت اسباب الجات فيلير يمكن سمعتها مني قبل كده الحاجه الكثيرة في مصر فالشورجت سندروم ده يعني 80% من الجات فيلير شكرا انا عايز الثالثه بقى يعني انا 80% من الجات فيلير غالبها بيبقى شورجت سندروم شكرا يا حبيبي الديسموتيليتي انا بشوفها اكتر واكتر في مصر، الديسموتيليتي هنا في مصر اكتر من الشور جات. ليه بقى؟ لان الشور جات معظمهم للاسف بي بيموتوا قبل ما نشوفهم لان ما عندناش هوم تي بي ان والسيرجيكال اكسبيرينس بتوع جراحين البطن او الجهاز الهضمي ما زالت محتاجه نوع من الخبره شوي. والاسباب الشور جات سندروم في الكبار طبعا مختلفه عن الاطفال كلكم عارفين الكلام ده خدت بال حضراتكم ده بيحصل ادابتيشن بروسيس وديت يعني المفروض الجراحين واطباء الجهاز الهضمي يعرفهم ان الامعاء دي من الاجهزه المهمه جدا بيحصل فيها ادابتيشن بروسيس كويسه جدا فا يعني ما نقاش في الفترات اللي فاتت دي جالي كذا تليفون من اهل مرضى الدكاتره فتحوهم جراحين هنا في مصر وسابوا الامعاء ميته جوه قال لك مش هنقدر نعمل لهم حاجه فبعت الدكتور احمد والدكتور كريم وخلتهم يعني ربنا اكرمهم وانقذوا حياتهم وبعدين حتى لو في 20 30 سم من الامعاء الامعاء ممكن تتاقلم فالادابتيشن ده وي هاف تو كيب ان مايند اول ذا تايم ان الامعاء از ا فيري باورفول اورجان فور ريجينيريشن اند ادابتيشن بروسيس علاج الجهاز الهضمي مانجمنت اوف جات فيلير او فشل الجهاز الهضمي مر بملاحظ كثيره زي ما انتم شايفين كده في الستينيات كان كل العيانين بموتوا في السبعينيات بدا التي بي ان يظهر وده كان مهم جدا وهو بالنسبه للجات فيلير زي الغسيل الكلوي لفشل الكلى وفي الثمانيات كان ميديكال تريتمنت وحاجات كده يعني بسيطه وفي التسعينيات وانتروديوسد الجات ترانسبلانتيشن او الانتستينال مالتي فيسرا ترانسبلانتيشن وبعدين في اخر ال20 سنه اللي فاتوا نتيجة لبعض المشاكل اللي مش ممكن نتخلص منها في زراعة الأمعاء والأحشاء بدأت أشوف حاجة تغني عن زراعة الأعضاء أو زراعة الأحشاء أو الأمعاء اللي هي الجات ريهابيليتيشن ستانلي ليت ستانلي هي جاست باست أواي تو ييرز أجاو and he was behind the development of the TPN. You imagine this is a child with gut failure without a transplant, he would die. And we cannot, we would not be able to introduce small bowel and multivisceral transplant if we cannot keep this child or baby alive until we transplant them. And ironically, we had a dinner together in, uh, in uh, one of the South American countries, and uh, one of the European uh, surgeons introduced him at the one who, in, who introduced Dr. Dedrick, at the one who introduced the TPN, and Karim is the one who tried to get rid of the TPN. في التسعينيات طبعا كنت في المكان المناسب والوقت المناسب. Uh, we introduced the program or the sacrolimus here. We have a revolution for the ka'kul. We started to do the amma. The is a highly immunogenic organ uh, and needs a more powerful immunosuppression. Of course, we have a lot of despair مع hope back and forth وديت لزملائي اللي يعني اللي قدامهم المستقبل الكبير don't never give up and uh, if uh, 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 never lose hope and do your best 
to help another human being. Uh, في ألفين واثنين دي مقالة مهمة جدا حطت فيها كل المراحل اللي مرينا بيها اللي establishment of intestinal multivisceral transplant I call it now gut transplant because it's not just the intestine or gastrointestinal transplant uh, the um, uh, slides, uh, this is my late mother, and uh, uh, this when I was able to convince the American government to be considering small bowel and multivisera at the standard of care. Nobody in the States and across the world that believed that I was able to do that with the American government. But it took me about eight months to convince them to consider small bowel and multivisera at the standard of care. And this was the party my uh, beloved mother used to live with me. And, and what they did, they put a bag of TPN in my plate when we having the dinner. When you talk about a small bowel transplant, it's not just a small bowel. It's a different... Composition. Uh, yeah, the chalta, chalta, uh, different, 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 this is liver and intestine. Early on, we did not give them the pancreas, but we start having problem in the kids with the biliary reconstruction and vascular reconstruction. So we give them pancreas as well. So this patient, they have two pancreas. And uh, when you have two pancreas, when you have two pancreas, that the radiologists get scared that they didn't know how to read the uh, x-ray because they see how come the patient have two pancreas. And this is the full multivisceral, just replacing the whole abdominal organs, the stomach, the edema, pancreas, uh, intestine, and liver. And then this is a, uh, because there was a huge demand for the liver. So if the patient has gut failure with intact, uh, native liver functions, and we give them a modified multivisera, stomach, duodenum, and pancreas, intestine. I d introduced this technique because there was a lot of demand for the liver, and we were fighting with each other. All the transplant centers who does the liver were fighting with me because they want the liver. So I said, well, then we can keep the native liver and give a modified multivisera. Um, that's why I think the war, the, the term small bowel transplant does not justify the, uh, uh, the procedure. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to pass this quickly because I don't think we have too many surgeons here. I'm dealing here with the smart people, and I'm glad we don't have surgeons here, maybe except Dr. Ahmed Adil. So. Forgive me if I say anything bad about the surgeons. And then you can see here, that's the show and tell. This is the full multivisceral graft in the eyes. And uh, this a, a, a donor uh, was three days old. And uh, I was refusing to take the organs because of the prematurity of the liver. The father of the baby was a physician, called me personally, and he said his wish for me to try to use this organ. You can see this is my hand and this is the whole organs. And I did listen to him and actually the patient now who received this is 24 years old, just sent me two weeks ago her picture and in the college. And I was taken uh, by her picture. So these organs grow in the recipient. Um, as you can see here, you cannot do this 
let us be realistic. How can I do this in my home country? The only way you do this, we have to, in, to apply or initiate the cadaveric liver, uh, cadaveric organ transplant. That's why I'm here uh, this month. I'm trying with the government by all means to implement القانون طلع في سنة في فبراير 2010 وما حدش بيبص عليه يتحط في الإدراج وخلاص لأن there is no owner there is no driver and for many reasons it, the lack of the trust between the public and the health system and the lack of initiatives uh, uh, between the physicians even when I talked to Dr. Ahmed al uh two three years ago he said, Yeah, Dr. Karim, Mishkila, Mish Mishkilat al Deen, and Mishkila, Mishkilat al Atubba. And he's absolutely right. So I'm hoping working with Dr. Khalid Abu Afar, he seems to be not just a politician, I think he is a good sci scientific minded guy. And I hope we can work together. And I don't care who does it, but it has to be done. And this is, a, uh, there is a video called uh, Surgery Saved My Life. This is a, uh, an adult man that he has a severe gut dismotility and the liver failure. Because there is a connection for Reem, there is a connection between the gut and the liver. They feed each other. And if you have longest standing SIPO and pseudo obstruction, some of these patients develop liver cirrhosis. And you can see he, after the organs uh, were placed, the farha al the transplant surgeon will see it. When the life comes back uh, 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 to the organs in the operating room, al farha tanya, and ma bibl ayan bi yushfa wa yukhrug wa yish hayatu adiya. Zama ulti fil introduction lil meeting. بتاعنا اللي بدأ امبارح ديت بتدي صورة سريعة على نتائج زراعة الأمعاء والأحشاء في حوالي 500 عيان ديت دول the heroes my heroes this is she is still alive Gina she is French she had her transplant in 1989, and that's when she's in the middle age, and now she's an adult. And um, uh, Tracy, uh, she uh, became a, uh, a, a physician. Asal khair. She became a physician, and she's 20 years after transplant. That's mine. They, uh, this patient could. Uh, get married and have children, as you can see here. But transplants still have limitations. Rejection, chronic rejection, graft, acute rejection. It's not without risk. And this is the worldwide uh, centers, and you can see here uh, across the globe. And I hope this is Africa. Uh, there is no single case of transplant in Africa, and I just really tell the people um, in the Western countries that I'm ashamed of myself because we haven't done small bowel in Egypt, but hopefully we'll do it very soon. And the uh, something called a graft acceptance, that how can we transplant the patient without immunosuppression? Uh, we're working on it in the lab to do that. You look at, uh, focus on the gut rehabilitation because there's something we are currently doing for patients with sugar gut syndrome and gut failure here uh, with the team we developed in NS Hospital and Air Force Hospital, bowel lengthening and, and, uh, and uh, correction of intracutaneous fistula. Uh, here, uh, this is the uh, uh, autologous reconstruction bowel lengthening. This is something very helpful. It's a biologic agent. And the intertrophic biologic agent, GLB2, or GATX. And I'm hoping when I uh, visit more and more, establish some connection 
with the uh, pharmaceutical companies that can provide us with this drug with less cost because it, in the United States it costs two hundred thousand dollars a year. Establish a team, and that's what I'm doing in a NAS hospital now at the full charity hospital. That patient comes, we take care of them, they go home, we didn't ask for a penny. And I'm trying, of course, this is non sustainable without the uh, donations from uh, the Egyptians and the non Egyptians, and I'm working hard on that. Ushab al Masri Akram Shab. وأنا بكلم صادق السويدي قال لي يا دكتور كريم ما تسيبك من الناس بتوع الخليج المصريين أكرم ناس ابن الشارع اللي اللي, اللي, في اللي بتشوف شارع ماشي في, في الشارع المصري ده أكرم من أي حد في العالم فأي بليف إن هم and I hopefully we will keep and sustaining the funding uh, uh, through the uh, uh, CAF Foundation um, this is really uh, a, a year in review that's applied to you that how can we innovate to eliminate the need for transplant. It does not mean I do not believe in transplant. I develop a transplant. But what I believe more in how can you help the patient the best you can. It's not about my ego. It is not about anything it's about the patient. How can you serve the patient the best way you can? And sometimes the American patient come excited about having a small bowel on a multivisera. The word I tell them, there is nothing better than your own gut. Nothing better than your own gut. You don't have to worry about rejection. You don't have to have an umbilical cord with us. But when it is needed and we fail to do gut rehab, then we will do a transplant. And uh, we did this study, and you can see here, um, uh, to develop that, it's a dynamic process. And this, uh, this paper that uh, published two years ago, showing that about 10% of these patients from uh, actually outside the uh, United States and this is a distribution from all over the country. And uh, about 60% of these patients have chronic failure. And some of these patients stay in the hospital for a year or two. I'm seeing this now in, in Egypt, and it's very troublesome. And even I mentioned something about it to the Minister of Health yesterday, that um, a lot, hundreds of patients died from gut failure in Egypt either from short gut syndrome, mesenteric vascular occlusion, or Crohn's, et cetera, et cetera, when they lose their gut and they die because there is no national system or program for home parental nutrition. Ines is doing a great job and her system and the others in the different uh, universities that I don't have the opportunity to interact <coughs> with them. But this should be a national policy. This, the government has to do something because if I send them WhatsApp, I receive every day about patients who die because they cannot have TPN and develop gut failure. It's really uh, very sad. And I made it very clear in the meeting yesterday, but I hope somebody will listen. But we will do it. Perseverance, if they cannot do it, we will do it together. If Karam Ibn Shab and Masri, we will do it. I believe in it. I want to do it. This is a new terminology. I want you to be aware of it. If any slides that you want to keep it in your mind, this is slide. Then I change the types of gut failure, not to whatever the cause is, into surgical. When and you know the Jarrahin always with the pain of the body. When the Jarrahin is with the pain of the body, I call it surgical failure. If the cause of gut failure is mucosal disease, I call it mucosal gut failure. It's like a failure of the endoderm. And the neuromuscular system, as I said in the beginning, the gut has its own brain. 
uh, there is this small book called Your Gut Has a Brain of Its Own. And uh, uh, the neural system and muscular system. And Steve Freem was talking about something like that. So it's a very complicated system. Um, and uh, this is the most, the worst disease a human being could have. It's worse than cancer. It really is. They suffer tremendously. Nobody believes in their symptoms because it's all uh, uh, subjective. And uh, sometimes they give, some, they give them psychiatric medication. They go to uh, psychiatric hospitals and nobody believes in them. And I think more and more of this now. I want you to be aware of it. And all the medication we have now, it doesn't help. Uh, you treat the bacterial overgrowth, you give them all the prokinetic agents, they reach a stage that irreversible. And, and there is no other treatment for this patient except surgical uh, treatment. The gut has three compartments, for gut, mid-gut, and hindgut. gut the three, or the three compartments feed each other. And uh, the most affected organ, usually the colon, followed by the stomach and then the intestine. And the, the stomach and the intestine, stomach is a foregut, intestine mostly midgut, and the colon is mostly hindgut. So when the hindgut is affected, the stomach and the intestine trying to back off. You know, we, we learn in physiology, and the gastroenteric, coloenteric, cholo-gastric reflexes. They talk to each other. So don't ignore that. And the mostly young, young, young kids. And uh, this is, you don't have to worry about it. Um, the causes of the surgical gut failure, as you can see here, I'm just I'm going to... Uh, uh, focus on, as you can see here, the mishaps from surgical intervention. Bariatric surgery uh, playing a major role in, here in, uh, in Egypt, and as I expected, that I think within 10 years from now or less, bariatric surgery will be obsolete. That with the, all the, the, uh, uh, the GLB-1 treatment now, I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, uh, now, it's, uh, it has a significant effect on weight loss. And uh, as I put in the 2015 paper, and I made it clear to all pediatric surgeons in the world that bariatric surgery is a al-bashar. With the only treatment, don't change what God gave us. Don't change the anatomy that Rabbina subhanahu wa ta'ala khala'a nabi. It's pure biological disturbance of the gut hormones. And it's becoming true now. Diyat humma doli ba'a kulluhum al-bayoneers. Yana aashu al-shreen sana al-lifatum ala al-bariatric surgery. And I showed them the picture, and I told them when I gave this talk in the uh, American Surgical Association Society, which is the highest prestigious society in the world. And uh, whatever I, the last paragraph in the discussion, that's exactly what we're seeing the last two or three years. It is spreading like a fire in, in the, all over the world. The treatment, the medical treatment of obesity, with the gut hormone analogs. And uh, we didn't have to worry about this. This is pure surgical. Uh, and uh, you can see here, we we'll focus on the non-transplant surgical procedure because keep in mind that you are the eyes of the surgeons. Surgeons, are most of them are dumb, including myself. And you are the one who see the patient first. And you have to guide a good gastroenterologist has to be a good surgically oriented physician. And vice versa. A good surgeon, a good surgeon has to be a good physician because 
A human being is a whole unit. You can't separate it. So you need to know when to look for a surgeon that can help your patient rather than sitting on them and treating them with drugs that's not going to work for them. And the way I, treat, I um, teach the uh, surgical generations or the, uh, the, the generations of new surgeons that you, they have to understand the embryology and the anatomy of the gut. And that's what it is. For gut, mid gut, hind gut. And this is all the picture showing how I don't care if I spent 12 hours in the operating room to fix the gut rather than doing a transplant because this is the best for the patient. As you can see here. عامل كأن انت عارف الخياطة اللي هي عندك في البلد ولا كده ولا الترز بتاع أيام زمان أهو أنا الترز بتاع العصر الحديث أو شوفك وخلة معدة جديدة وحاجات بنعملها هنا في مصر الوقت الكل العينين اللي فقدوا معدتهم لأسباب مختلفة أو لخبط لهم الجهاز الهضمي لأسباب متعددة منها البرياتريك سيرجري أحمد دكتور أحمد يقول لكم أو بشوف أنا أطفال كتير الوقت من الشرق الأوسط طفل من ليبيا عمل له زراعة قولون مش قولون بتاعه أوتولوجس ترانسبلان وعندنا خمس ست عيانين لسه شايفينهم مع الدكتور أحمد الدكتور كريم موريس من أسبوع مش عارف ربنا يدينا القوة نقدر نعمل لهم حاجة أشوف كلها إيه كلها زراعة أوتولوجس لأن ما فيش أحسن من الأعضاء بتاعتنا ليه بقى أنا آه. ديت لو عشان تبقى عندك فكرة إن إحنا بنعمل تطويل للأمعاء أهي آه حاجة اسمها سيريال ترانسفيرس انتروبلاستي الدكتور أحمد عادل الوقت من أكثر الخبراء في مصر الوقت بيعملها ومحتاجنيش في أي حاجة وتطاول الأمعاء بتضاعف طولها وديت من علاج البكتيريا الأوفر كروس كل ما تقلل الدايمتر بتاع الباول كل ما الترانزيت تايم بيقل والبكتيريا الأوفر كروس بتقل والأبزوربشن بيزيد يعني ده انترو بلاستي مش علشان هيزود السيرفيس اريا هيزود الأبزوربتيف سيرفيس اريا مش أناتوميكال بات فانكشنال العملية ديت I introduced it to the colon on the same uh, that uh, في 2002 ديت I introduced it two years ago ده اللي بنعمله في الأمعاء بنعمله في القولون وديت uh, لأن في الشور جات سيندروم لما بتوصل الأمعاء بالقولون الجزء المتباقي 10 20 سنتي الأبزوربتيف باور بتاع اللارج باول is the same or even better than the small باول with the, uh, the, all the bacterial uh, fermentation of the carbohydrates and the gut uh, and the large bowel or polocytes uh, transform it into uh, amino acids and fatty acids. They described it pseudo-obstruction. Uh, call it the trifecta procedure. كان العينين دول في التسعينيات كنت بعمل لهم زراعة أمعاء. قلت طب في أي حاجة يعني تدوهم فرصة أو bridge the transplant أو to cure them for a long time instead of having a transplant. Uh, فدي trifecta procedure. Uh, uh, ساعات نعمل شوية كده تحويلات وبتاع في العينين اللي معمولهم جراحه قبل كده عشان نطولهم دول العينين اللي عندهم بورتو ميزنتيريك بينا ثرومبوزيس كنت بعمل لهم مالتا ايفيسرا الوقت اعمل لهم شنطه او حاجه ده شاب من قطر بعد البرياتريك سيرجري بهدلوه بهدله شديده فعملت له كل التوصيلات ديت هيز ابات 6 ييرز اوت هي اكشولي روت ا بوك فور ببلشت فور ويكس اجو بالعربي من قطر وسماه من الموت إلى الحياة حاجة زي كده وكان كل الحاجات دي شوف النتائج ممتازة جدا خدت بالكم اهي يعني ده السيرجكال في تي بي ان ثيرابي ده الأوتكم بتاعه ده السيرجكال دية الأسباب الوفاة في كل نوع ده قدرنا 
ان احنا بي statistical analysis to find uh, predictive or risk factors for outcome شوف هو ده ال restoration of nutritional autonomy معناها يعني العيانين اللي قدرنا نتخلى عن ال TPN و you restore their nutritional autonomy with their own gut and discontinuation of TPN we have a good example of patients here in Egypt now but this is showing you 388 patients over 10 years the the discontinuation of TPN about 78% which is excellent i el haga le bardo azik to pay attention to it in the restoration of nutritional autonomy with autologous reconstruction the surgical reconstruction is similar to transplant and the patient with pseudo obstruction this purple curve is definitely less than those with Crohn's disease and surgical reconstruction. You can see with autologous reconstruction and tra transplant, the nutritional autonomy is similar variables. These are the predictors. عشان لما العين يجي للعيادة أو يجي لك العيادة لو لو كريم عمل له أو أحمد عمل له العملية ديت هل يقدر يو أتشيف نيوتريشنال أوتونومي إيه البريدكتور دي البريدكتورز we خلقنا uh, model سميناه uh, 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 RNA uh, model خدت بالك restored nutritional autonomy model ال ال ده موجود على app في uh, uh, على ال website انك تقدر تستعمليه وبيسموه كريمز RNA model او حاجة زي كده سيتروين انت عارفين له اهميه جامده جدا quality of life definitely with with the autologous reconstruction is a lot better than transplant and this is uh, the psychiatric thing i discussed with you of course the, particularly in egypt this slide is very important it's definitely cost effective to do autologous reconstruction before you consider a transplant but when transplant comes to play then we do transplant and this is the uh, usually the algorithm that I didn't want to uh, bother you with the details, but you go through an algorithm. If you have liver failure, you go for a transplant. Your liver, your liver of the patient is good. Try to reconstruct them. If we fail to reconstruct them, or they fail to respond to uh, the LP2 or GATX or enterocytic growth factor, then they go for a transplant. Uh, this uh, knowledge the, the team may develop um, over the years. And the third one, and I'm uh, sorry I didn't have an update slide, that the uh, Al Nas Hospital have a wonderful team now. Uh, Dr. Ines McGower for the nutritional team, uh, Dr. Ahmed Adil for the surgical team, we, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Ahmed Abdullah for the pediatric gastroenterology. We, uh, Habib the Doctor, uh, Abir Abdel Latif, Taman, as a, as a Doctor Abir Abdel Latif, the at the Umm of Ta'akuli Bahayel, taking care of everyone. And that this is the foundation uh, that we hope to continue to support the charity and that's a charity hospital and that is uh, i forgot about this slide and uh, you can see here uh, it's a wonderful hospital i uh, invite all of you to go and visit uh, still a lot of work to do but you can see dr ahmed adil here dr abir fein here fil aqit fil amaliyat tamil amaliyat mashi dr ahmed abdullah خدت بالك ويعني انا فخور بيهم جدا وديت يعني الحاجه اللي هت اللي هتعيش بعد ما اموت يعني ده هم املي في الحياه وطبعا السلايد التاريخيه دي طبعا زي ما انتم عارفين ده الدكتور فرو عزت استاذي وابويا الروحي وده دين وارن بعد ما رحت امريكا اللي هو اخترع الشنط وستارزل برضو عشت معاه أكثر من 21 سنة 
طبعا كلهم توفاهم الله وبعدين الدور علي انا بقى شكرا جزيلا دكتور كريم كان معتاد اسعدتنا جدا بالمحاضره ما فيهاش بس علم لكن فيها كل شيء من الاثكس وما بين الهوبس وما بين الفرستريشن بندعي لك ان ربنا يحقق لك الجيرني وتقدر تمبلمنت الكادافيريك ترانسبلانتيشن في مصر وبعدين الانتستينال ترانسبلانتيشن وبنستسمعك هي ستيت اوف ارت ان احنا فيو مينتس لديسكشن ومعلش تبتدي سؤال مازن. لان حضرتك من المحاضره عرفنا ان البيلرز بتاعه السمول انتستينال فيلير مانجمنت نيوتريشن ميديكال تريتمنت وطبعا سيرجيكال وقبل الترانسبلانتيشن طبعا اللينثنينج بروسيجرز وما الى ذلك concerning the medical treatment حضرتك شايف ان فعلا جي ال بي 1 اجونست 1 اند 2 اللي هم افيلبل واللي في كذا ستادي ببلشد عليهم دو يو ثينك هيدوا العيان هوب احنا كلنا طبعا ميديكال فعشان كده يمكن السؤال ده عايز اعرفه وجهه نظر حضرتك واسمح لي بعد كده زمايلنا هيبقى معاهم المايك يسالوك اسئله والاودينسز ومش هنطول على حضرتك اشكرك جدا اوكي دكتور مازن نرحب بيك جدا دكتور مازن ويسعدنا وجود حضرتك معانا وطبعا دكتور كريم لو في اي سؤال آه. هو في تعليق قصير كده اتفضل دكتور, دكتور مازن نجا دكتور مازن نجا دكتور مازن نجا معانا انت فين يا ابني انت فين نفسي اشوفك نعم. انت فين في تعليقين على اللي حضرتك قلته تعليق منهم بتاع استاذي الله يرحمه كان دايما يقول لي جود انترنست سيرجيكال مايندد جود سيرجون الميديكال مايندد وده اتعلمته زي ما حضرتك قلت كده من استاذي فعلا. التعليق الثاني اللي حضرتك قلته فعلا ان الترانسبلانتيشن از نوت ذا ايديال سولوشن. ات از جاست ذا سولوشن ناو. ذاتس ترو اي ثينك ذا ترانسبلانت از ا لايف سيفنج سيرجري. سي ذا بروبلم اي فيس ايفن ان ذا نايتد ستيتس. ذا فيزيشنز هاف ذا ذا سيرجنز ان بارتيكولار اي it's easy to do a transplant than to do gut reconstruction. And I doubt about it. Second, the gut reconstruction needs certain surgical skills. That's what I'm teaching Ahmed, we, uh, we Kareem al Wati, with Dr. Ahmed Adri, a pediatric surgeon. We do the best in the beginning, I hope that يعني اقدر اساعد اكثر عدد من الجراحين الشباب بتوعنا بتوع مصر لان ده هو ده المستقبل. ف الى حد في عشر سنين بقيت اهاجم كل الترانسبلانت سيرجن اللي بيعملوا جات ترانسبلانت قلت لهم اي ديفلوب ذا بروسيدور بت دونت دو ات انليس ات از نيدد. يعني ما ما تفكرش في نفسك فكر في المريض بس طبعا في ليميتيشن في السيرجيكال سكيلز اتس ايزي ان انت تهد بيت وتبنيه او تبني بيت من جديد غير انك تعمل ريموديلنج وبتحتاج سيرجيكال سكيلز وديسيجن ميكنج بروسيس ان ذا اوبريتنج روم فكلامك مظبوط يا مازن you will even if you look in the history of medicine you will see a successful uh, surgeon always have a successful friend in the medical field they work together that's why a multidisciplinary team is very important i see it more and more in egypt now because into mafsulin tamaman medical mafsul an surgical fa you don't feed each other الوقت عبير واحمد 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 وكلهم احمدات ومحمدات زي ما مراتي بتقول هو بقى انت تعرف محمد من محمد ازاي محمد نمره واحد محمد نمره اثنين فساعات بيبقى صعب جدا انما ده وات اي ونت ديفلوب ان ايجيبت مالتي ديسيبلينري تيم ابروتش ذي كان توك تو ايتش اذر اند تريت ذا بيشنت از ا سنجل هيومن بي Uh, so that's what I think that's something in, in missing, but it's getting better and better in Egypt now. GLP-1 agonist, right? GLP-1, really, they're, uh, 
Paul uh, from the Netherlands is working on it now because it's going to be a lot cheaper than GLB2. Uh, GLB2, uh, it's, we call it in the States, GATX. Oh, it's very effective. But you have to have a healthy gut to work on it. So the most effective thing is a combination of surgical reconstruction and, uh, and GLB2. The patients who are not a good surgical candidate, you start with GLB2. Then those who fail surgical reconstruction, you give them GLB2. So it's a combination therapy based on the patient situation. The GLB2 doesn't work for patient with mucosal disease or neuromuscular disease, but works mostly for patients with short gut and they have the residual bowel have a healthy motility and healthy intracytes. But it is very effective. It's two two hundred thousand dollars a year. Cost all مشكلة. Yeah, too much. But this is in America. زي ما حضرتك عارف ال two hundred thousand dollar cost ممكن يكلفنا هنا twenty thousand, not two hundred thousand. But I'm trying to. I talked to the company uh, in the United States. And the, unfortunately, there is no generic for, for the GATX now, but once it becomes, I think that would be very, very helpful. I'm in contact with Paul, and he told me the new generation of the GAT hormones is going to be a lot cheaper. But he's doing some studies. Shukran, Dr. Karim. Co-chairs, if you have any questions, Dr. Karim and Hashem al Khayyat, thank you so much for this elegant, amazing lecture, state of art. Uh, what I'm concerning about, you raise a very important point regarding uh, bariatric surgery, which is يعني, mode of must, it's, it's, it's kind of mode. We, I think nowadays in Egypt, we did more than maybe uh, 2,000 cases a day. Uh, you raise a very important point regarding uh, bypass and uh, and why, which may lead to gut failure. The second issue is both the sleeve complication, which become apparent. We see a lot of cases of severe GERD, and I saw one case of adenocarcinoma at the site of junction between stomach and esophagus. What's your opinion, and what is, you are a pioneer, and you are a leader, a legend, uh, sh should the surgeon stop this kind of operation in the next few years or decade? Well, okay, thank you for your comment. Um, I'm not a pioneer or anything. And uh, uh, I tell them all the time. And I'm giving a, a talk uh, uh, for uh, their club in Oxford. Uh, uh, first week of December, and um, I totally agree with you. I it's a problem with the sleeve, and I see it every and I see it every day here. Is most of this patient have associated gut dysmotility, and when they do the sleeve, their problem gets even worse. One observation, but I don't have a, uh, uh, a really uh, metabolic answer to it. Most of the patients with this mortality, they have morbid obesity. I don't know it is related to converting and the being having muscle mass becomes fat. So if you, you measure them, Lean body mass is much less, and their weight is mainly fat. And this is most of the patients with the bariatric surgery, they have the same phenomenon. And my belief, and I hope somebody can prove me wrong or right, most of these patients with morbid obesity have associated gut dysmotility. When they do the sleeve or they uh, ruin Y, they start having more reflux and more jerk because whatever left in the stomach becomes worse utility wise. The second part of your question, I totally agree. 
I didn't want to criminalize it. I didn't want to say it's a crime, but I think it should not be done. And uh, the results of the uh, gut hormone therapy now for morbid obesity, um, it is just spreading everywhere and is going to be the solution to most of the patients. And then, as I said, that is proved my hypothesis. If you read the paper in 2015, the last paragraph of the discussion, exactly what I said. The, tre the future treatment for morbid obesity is biological treatment with one of the gut hormones. So I, I tell everybody uh, in the United States that do not do bariatric surgery شكرا لحضرتك شكرا جزيلا لو لو استمرنا نسمع لمنتصف الليل يعني احنا مستمتعين بصراحة يعني في كل اتجاهات زي ما دكتور شريف قال لو يعني لو استمرنا نسمع لمنتصف الليل المحاضرة بتاع حضرتك مش هنزهق يعني لا لا يخليك لا يخليك هو بس أنا كان السؤال في في ذهني قبل ما دكتور هشام بيسأل حضرتك من ساعة ما سمعت يور كومنت على البرياتريك سيرجري يعني أوفر ذا باست ميني يرز الموربيدلي أوبيز بيشنس اللي معاهم كوموربيديتيز استفادوا في المانجمنت بتاع الديابيتس و والاخر ف ان ذا فيوتشر ده ما حضرتك تفضلت انه في يعني ثيرابي كامينج ثيرابي لكن الايرا اللي احنا فيها حاليا ان ذا ان ذا كارنت ستيتس واللي باست كان ايه الحل البديل على اساس ان المورلي اوبيس بيشنس يبقى في بينيفيت من البرياتريك سيرش مشكورا لحضرتك يعني هو هو طبعا كلام حضرتك صح وات وي توكينج توداي 10 ييرز اجو يس would you let the patient die from morbid obesity or do bariatric surgery? That's the only solution we have. So there was nothing wrong with it, but if it's done, حتى في المقالة دية طلبت من الحكومة الأمريكية تقنن البرياتريك سيرجري. لأن فتحوها على الواسع. أي حد ممكن يعمل سليب لأن السليب كاستريك تمية عشر داي and you build the patient over there or here. لدرجة بعض العينين قالوا لي ان الجراح عمل لي البرياتريك سيرجري وبديله عشان ابويا وامه ما يعرفوش بديله بالشهر كده كل شهر اه يعني ايه زي ما كانك شاري تلفزيون من مش عارف ايه وفي القسط يعني حاجات كده حاجات محزنة إلى حد ما آه فا اي هوب ان اي هوب اي هوب ان احنا دلوقتي يعني في الترناتيف When we have the alternative, خلينا ما نفكرش في الماضي بس طبعا بنصايحكم للمرضى دي هتبقى مهمة جدا ان هم ما يعني يعني دكتور احمد عادل يقول لك كم عيان ماتوا from bariatric surgery coming with everything you proposed and, and uh, we saved some of them and the others was too late to do anything for them. Thank you, Professor Karim. Uh, just for the time, uh, just uh, one question for Professor Abhattah. And Dr. Karim, I am very happy to be here. 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 to use these uh, probiotics or uh, dysbiosis in treatment of such cases like that of intestinal failure? Yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent question, really. Um, when I started doing the small bowel transplant, the first thing that I noticed, at the time, we didn't know much about bacterial overgrowth by the way we know now. We didn't know much about this mortality the way we know now. And I used to uh, do duodenal aspiration, stomal aspiration, count the bacterial number, identify the types. I learned a lot from this, and it's actually published in 1991. What happened, that's before we know about microbiota, or dysbiosis, all that stuff. And what I noticed that when I kill used to use something called mud. And the mud is a combination of antibacterial and anti-anaerobics and the fungal. You kill certain species, the others overgrow. 
So when you kill one, the other overgrow. If I kill the bacteria, the candida goes sky high count. I used, we used to count them uh, uh, per power of six or 10. So it's, it's a problem, it's still a problem now. And what I usually uh, tell the patient that because it's affected their absorption, it makes their life miserable. They have sometimes, the patient tell me that even their cats or their dogs get offended by the smell of the stool or the gas. And the only way, I think we're in a learning curve now. If you look at the microbiota studies, uh, it's just still, you, f you feel like doing genomes, you know, trying to identify the genetic uh, 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 make up of any disease, you come up with 10 million theories. The same thing with the microbiota now, which is causing what, nobody knows. But hopefully in the future research that we can identify a specific microbe that can cause whatever disease we're looking for. At the present time, I think what I usually do, uh, just to do single. The flagell is the best drug for you because mostly anaerobes and you don't give it more than one week or so. And ask the patient, stop it after one week and wait until you have a, another episode. And the, the other episode you can use either flagell or cepro or uh, rifeximin. And, and the Reem did a, a great job it's a, it's a continuous problem. And then I, you tell the patient, eat, you know, observe what you eat and what, when you develop the episode of the bacterial overgrowth and try to adjust your diet accordingly. Yeah, and every patient is different. And, um, and uh, the patient with pseudo-obstruction, it is a major problem for them. The drug is in the lion in the zoom, are fine on the sebo actor minute, minute the catcher of Emmerich. Well, uh, it's a, it's a problem. Uh, and hopefully there would be a, the solution is to regulate the gut is like the brain, uh, like the heart. It's a, it's a beating organ. And when it's a beating organ, when you dysregulate the rhythm of the neuromuscular system, that's when you develop bacterial overgrowth. And that's what we deal with the pseudo-obstruction. Pseudo-obstruction is equal to cardiac failure, heart failure. That's what exactly it is. Pseudo-obstruction in the gut equal to heart failure. When I was talking to Magdi Aoub, I told him the gut is more important than the heart. Yes. It is. Thank you, Professor Karim. When our heart is stopped, we die. When the gut dysfunction, we suffer. Thank you, Professor Karim. Shukran gazeelan ala al-muhadra. Yani, zayim al, ahna mukin nuad muhadrak tool al-yum. Bas, ana arif haak murha qadde, wa gai milin raih fin. I really thank you. Bas, kur hadrita giddan, yani. بنشكر الدكتور كريم للعام الثاني على التوالي رئيس شرف في المؤتمر ولي ريفيو واحنا بنتفق من دلوقتي على الميعاد بتاع السنه الجايه ان شاء الله اللي حضرتك هتحدده ان شاء الله تكون موجود معانا بشكر تشيبس الدكتور هشام الدكتور شريف بيه الدكتور نادري اختي العزيزه دكتوره عبير اتفضلي يا عبير اتفضل